lovely sight. Okay, let's see if Agarth has found out how the Tuatha are tracking us all over the place. Like we're leaving a trail of breadcrumbs everywhere. Part of luck diving for decades to come. Last month you told me that the plague would take us all. I know, but that's not what fate says anymore. <laughs> Damn it, Agarth. You're cut off. We're putting him out of work. Yeah, and I bet I know whose fault that is. Am I interrupting something? It's your fault that I can't pay my tab, you know. I wasn't ever supposed to come back here in the first place. I've spent the last 20 years knowing what fate had in store for me. And then you... Damn it. I thought I had my life figured out. Not for a fate weaver, it isn't. But that's just the problem. When I was young, I thought I could overcome anything. Now, I know otherwise. I fought beasts the size of trees, was celebrated by mortals and fae alike. When I was initiated into the Fate Weavers, I thought it was a reward for my good deeds. The first time I saw my own fate, I realized it was nothing but a curse. My own death, of course. But not a hero's death, as I had always dreamed. I was going to die alone and unknown. Killed by an Etin and used for stew. It was a terrible end. But I knew it was part of fate's greater plan. Then you came and changed that future. You stole my part in the tapestry. I was at peace with knowing the worst. But what do I do now that there's nothing to know? You're right. My glory days don't have to be over. And as long as I'm around you, I don't know how my story will end. That means I've got to make sure you stay around in one piece. Maybe this old trinket from my youth will help. After all, I don't just owe you my life. I owe you my future. Sounds like you owe a lot of bar tabs, too, that you never planned on paying Why, back. I once tracked the Yeth of Avgrun on a moonless night by smell alone. Fay or not, I could have tracked those Tuatha sober. They've set up in a cavern north of town, complete with some way of scrying your location. That's how they found you so easily. I have a plan, but it'll take the both of us to work. They took a big risk getting across Erethel undetected. All to attack one single objective. You. They're using something big to track you. They call it the Eyes of Tirnok. Smash it, and they won't be following you anymore. The main entrance is heavily guarded, and will require a strong attack. The other route is trapped. It'll need a subtler approach. Straightforward and direct. A warrior after my own heart. I'll cover the back and make sure they can't escape to report back to whoever sent them here. Let's track down some trouble. Let's do it. That's All right. right. Let's go in the front door. Kick in the front door and uh, come in swinging. That's the way to do it. I just thought about something. Interesting concept. Let's say we're talking about this, this, this fabric or this weave of fate. And everyone has their own particular thread that, okay. Right. So we, we, I guess we get the analogy. Well, what if your thread was taken out? Like he said, he essentially stole his place in this. He made a comment earlier about how when you, when you change something's fate, like the, what was it, an Etten that was supposed to kill Agarth? Well, instead, we killed the Etten. So that Etten's not going to go on and, I don't know, have children. Kill anybody else and cook them for stew. And all the lives that would have ended now won't at the hands of that Etten. And all the things that Etten might have done will now go undone. Well, you know, fate may have a bigger plan even than that and put something else in its place to accomplish the same things. So whatever's supposed to happen, happens. But I, I, can, uh, I can say that it is impossible 
for a mortal or fay or anyone else to have the foresight to know where meddling with shit like that isn't going to essentially unravel everything. Kind of like, you know, I don't know. You ladies could relate to this. Stockings. Take out one little thread and the whole thing unravels, right? That type of thing. This is the front entrance. You'll face their strongest guards. So it's no place for subtlety. Find their scrying mirror and smash it. I'll slip in the back and make sure none of them escape. Good luck. I'll see you inside. Sounds like a plan. Go in, kick ass, smash this thing, and leave. I can do that. Smashing things, perhaps? If you go in the other way, you get to disarm a bunch of traps and stuff, but uh, I don't have the perk to get extra stuff for disarming traps. At least I don't think I do yet. So I'm going to get stuff from killing all these two off, which this is more fun anyway. Ouch. Oh, those spear guys. Yeah, they hit pretty hard. Alright, this archer's got to go. Archer in this game knows that you run out of arrows. Apparently this asshole doesn't. I wonder if there's a twist in the story where the main reason these two author are after us is our ability to change fates or change what change history before it happens that type of thing is actually a threat to those who's um, who rely on whatever they're doing to happen in other words the fae are changing things and that in and of itself is how it's supposed to go right and so we can undo that Kind of like, uh, oh man, you have the plan and the changing of the plan is the actual plan. And so changing the plans of the plans is what's a threat to the, I, okay. then your brain just starts to go, you know what, screw this. Very cool though, anything that gets you to think. There's a bunch of these guys. Now I see why Agar took the back door. I'm sitting here messing around with the chakrams. Uh, oh, really? Because they're awesome. And also, just, just really to show you guys. But uh, if I were to build this character again, just to see its uh, potential... I would invest actually a little bit less in the magic. I wouldn't invest so much in the chakrams. I would just unlock the uh, the magic cost reduction perk and dump all the points into that and probably save, oh geez, probably six, eight, ten points. This there, There's actually wasted points in sorcery just to use the chakrams, just to get them strong enough to where there's something of a viable weapon. Um, another downside to that is that essentially we can't really max out all the chakram's capabilities because there is a. Uh... Oh, well, that that sucked. Well, it just hurt me. It didn't curse me. Well, that's good. Every other time I've failed on those, I've gotten a a curse or a disease or something. But um, the some of the some of the perks for the chakram can only be had at much higher tiers of sorcery. So this is really just because I think they're cool. We may um, 
now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, we got into play with them, and part of the reason is, well, besides really just enjoying this game, I, I don't mind playing through it with you guys. I mean, we've already streamed this, too. I don't mind playing through it again. But now that uh, I've, I've showed you guys, an, another reason besides enjoying it was just to uh, introduce uh, some of you guys to it that maybe hadn't played it yet. Because even though this um, this had a big budget, and which wound up essentially sinking this game, um, it didn't get all the fanfare it should have gotten. Which is uh, kind of surprising because EA... Well, EA didn't have to invest much. Basically, all they did was reap the rewards and let the studio take the fall for the game. Is how I understand how that pretty much went down. So that's when EA, EA, EA was at their worst. Uh, they've gotten somewhat better in the last few years, but this is one of the uh, this is one of the last victims of the old regime that was handling EA's uh, business practices in general. Anyway, you, you can actually go look this up. Was it big, big, huge game studios? Big, huge studios? Big, huge. Studios. Yeah, go check it out. And there's a, there's actually a bit of a story, and a lot of uh, personalities involved in the making of this game and the epic disaster that resulted from it. But that still didn't get the fanfare that it should have gotten, and so I, I'm still surprised to see how many people hadn't heard of this or hadn't played it yet. Oh, wow, this actually does look cool. I think I'll go check it out five years later, you know? Um, so that was a part of it. So the chakras, now we've introduced it. I may actually go respec and switch over to the bow just for, um, what would you say, min-maxing purposes. Optimal build type thing. We actually have a few more points right now to stick into might and finesse and have a... Uh, 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 be much stronger um, in both melee and range, really. Bow can be really, really nasty at higher levels, and we're going to invest a bunch of points into the finesse tree regardless. In fact, uh, it's nice to not have to waste those points. If you use the bow, there's absolutely not a... There's actually not a... I don't think any wasted perks at all with this. The, uh, the concession was made just so we could use the chakrams. So, yeah, I may go back and do that. You can respect pretty much whenever you want. Just go, uh, we'll just collect some parts and go make a decent bow for ourselves. And check that out. The bow system is kind of cool. You don't really have ammo. You, um, it's kind of like a cooldown. I, I, I guess you could say it's a cooldown timer. Yeah, if, say, you've got seven arrows and you use them all, then it takes a minute just to get, uh, any of your arrows back. But if you, uh, if you keep a few in reserve, just shoot a couple. And kind of, I, I think it's best to mix and match with your combat. We're here. Good luck. Okay, we're supposed to smash this thing, right? I can do that. Oh, who's this? The undying mortal has grown tired of running, has she? You Skyrim fans will recognize his voice. Back. Can you tell me the difference between a creature of nature and a child of dust? Like yourself. I don't really care, dude. We children of nature know our roles. Meek and mighty. Prey and predators. Life and death. All serve the cycle. You children of dust do not know your place. You come into our land. You come to face your hunters. And you... You don't know when to die. <laughs> no mortal, perhaps, but I am Gadflo, blessed herald of the merciful Tenoch. Our army shall cleanse the world of your mortal imperfection. I see. And you. You're the super All Nazi fae, then, huh? End, even if some are more persistent than others. I'll show you persistent. I got a boot with persistent laces on it, strapped up to kick you in your backside, punk. At least the Tawatha <laughs> won't be able to track you so easily now. But it looks like you've got the personal attention of their king, Gadflo. If you were anyone else, I'd suggest you start running and not stop for a few years. But you might just have a chance. You're a mortal that survived death. 
You exist outside of fate. The Fae do not deal well with change, and you represent a threat to whatever has driven them to this war. And as much as I hate to say it, you'll need to take Aelin Sheer up on her offer of help. The Codex of Destiny should hold some answers for you. For all I know, you already met with her at the House of Balance, but it sounds like she's the only lead now. We should be able to get out this way. House of Ballads. Yeah, I was thinking she was uh, meeting me with Agarth, but no. Gotta go. We're going to the House of Ballads anyway. I kind of want to finish up their whole thing with the uh, the Maid of Windermere and stuff. It's actually a, a pretty cool quest. I think when you look at some of these quests and stories in and of themselves, they can be uh, a bit lacking ways. And, you know, with this much content, it's impossible to please everybody with every quest. I get it. But um, if you take each, oh, what would you say? Like you have the House of Ballads, we'll eventually have the House of Winter, I think, or whatever. And the War Sworn, then you have the, uh, the Travelers, the Thieves Guild. And all that, they each have their own thing going on. There's something of a moral, I think, to each one of the stories, too. That kind of fits into the whole. The writer behind this game is pretty amazing. Looks like I just found another set piece, too. Ooh, that's, that's not bad, actually. Sure, why not? Need to find a new chess piece. I think I accidentally got rid of a good one. Oh, well. Yeah, there we go. Maybe slightly less armor rating, but... Yeah, if, if I were to wear this with the boots, then I would get that first perk. It's plus two to finesse abilities. Doesn't help me at all in unlocking finesse perks, but it does uh, add two. So if you've got one maxed out, say, five out of five, it'll actually make it seven out of seven. For example. Boy, I, I do like the look of that sword. Need to go hit a merchant too. For right now, it looks like we're going to need to go to... Uh, Oh, oh yeah, before we go back to the House of Ballads, we need to go speak to the monks. That's right. Go to the mission. So I guess that's where I'll meet you guys on the next one. Sounds good to me. Let's see, where is it at? Yeah, we can go straight there. All right. And we'll go talk to the father, whoever it is, and uh, see where we go from here. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, that, was, that was actually a little bit of fun. Yeah, at least the two off won't be chasing us anymore, right? Anyway, y'all take care, and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye-bye.